Uh, welcome. My name is Willie Sanders. I'm going to be kind of the technical representative for this course. We're all really excited about um, this course, digital storytelling. Um, as you read from the description, it's taking the arts and integrating technology um, in kind of a creative way. So, I, so I'm looking really looking forward to this, and I'm 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 very hopeful that you guys are going to enjoy. It, your students are going to enjoy. It. Maybe some parents who want to participate in it <laughs> are going to enjoy it as uh, enjoy it as well. Um, <clears throat> So just a little bit about myself. Um, I am the founder and executive director of an organization called Pass It On. We're an IT training organization. We do youth and adult um, technical training uh, throughout Baltimore City and around the area. Um, <clears throat> our main focus is on preparing uh, youth and adults for the IT workforce, but we also do youth enrichment classes. Um, so that is our the nature of our partnership with the the ministers conference. We're helping them to roll out some different innovative types of youth enrichment. This being one of them. Um, I'll talk more about our our role in the class, um, but first I want to give the other instructors a chance to introduce themselves and tell uh, tell so that they can tell you a little about themselves before we dive into the course and how it's made up and what you can expect. Um, so I saw uh, Grio Meekins on the call. Um, so if, if you want to let me take you, I think you might be on mute. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself, Ms. Meekins? Hi, um, my name is Sandra Meekins and I am a, what can you say, griot uh, at the Arena Playhouse. I've been there for almost, what, 20 years and teaching for 47 and just retired, working on my, and going into my second year retirement. And I love storytelling. Now, this digital storytelling is gonna be quite, quite, quite interesting and fun for me because I love the storytelling, but now adding the digital part is gonna be exciting. And it's going to be something, something new and different. So I'm excited. So the children and I both are going to be on a adventure and join the storytelling. And everybody has a story. Everybody, even the parents, but everybody has a story. And everybody's story is going to be different. And that's what's so exciting about the whole piece is that we're going to have individual stories told, and then we're going to be to a, a group story. So I'm looking for fun, 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 fun. Awesome. All right, and um, we have my co-instructor, uh, Mr. Thomas Sanders on the line. You wanna introduce yourself, Tom? Uh, sure thing. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Thomas Sanders. Um, I'm here as a co-instructor uh, for this particular class. Um, through Pass It On, I also uh, co-instruct the uh, audio engineering um, in Baltimore City. Uh, we've we've worked with a couple of schools there, um, teaching uh, not only the audio uh, recording and engineering, but also music. Um, that's uh, sort of my background. I have about 20 years of um, guitar performance experience, uh, piano, uh, several instruments and, and uh, music. Um, but also have uh, a theater background as well. Um, growing up, I spent about 12 years studying theater. Uh, so a little bit about, uh, you know, writing plays and stories and, and things. And um, also with that, <laughs> with the theater training, um, also have a few years of um, art as well. So all of those things kind of collide together uh, and being able to use them in a STEAM, what well, they call it STEAM now, but uh, STEM uh, program has, has, uh, has been very interesting. So I'm glad to be here. Awesome. All right. So Miss uh, um, <clears throat> Meekins, or Grio Meekins, she already spoke a bit about how uh, the role she's going to play in this program. Uh, she's going to be taking a lead on helping the children uh, develop their stories. Um, come uh, teaching them the kind of the, the the formula to making good tales. 
how to develop plot, how to develop characters, things of that nature. Our role is going to be more so on the technical side. We're going to be teaching um, the youth two different platforms, two different um, uh, web-based platforms for interpreting their stories in kind of a 21st century digital way. The first platform that we're going to be exploring is called Scratch. So Scratch is a uh, computer programming language that was developed by MIT, uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, really big Ivy League um, technical school, but they developed this um, programming language with children in mind. The goal of the programming language is to take some of the complexity of computer programming out of the mix and just teach the mindset of how to program. So instead of using a bunch of complex words and uh, characters that you, you see in other types of programming languages, instead they use these blocks, these, uh, these code blocks. And it's a drag and drop. It's very visual. As a matter of fact, the things that you get to code create visual stories. So uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Thomas. He's going to demonstrate a visual story that me and him collaborated on to guys, kind of give you guys a demo of some of the fun things you'll be able to do with Scratch. I'm going to, I'm going to pass you, I'm going to make you the presenter, Tom, so that you can um, show them our, our, our story. Make you the presenter. Okay, so I'm going to share with you guys our sample story here. Um, sh are you sharing on your screen now? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Make sure this is correct. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay. So this is, once again, this is a Scratch program. And then this is our short story, uh, Journey Through Space. Uh, Tom, you might need to um, take your, uh, or at least put your microphone near the speakers because we can't hear your audio. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's uh, restart. <laughs> So um, one thing uh, we'll mention about the Scratch program, again, um, it's web-based, but in addition to being able to access Scratch through, uh, internet, through the internet, there's also a tool called Scratch Studios. Um, during the course, we're gonna be showing, um, showing the kids how to set up both of those, both of those um, <clears throat> different ways of accessing Scratch. Um, it's a free program, so there's no, no cost or anything associated with it from that perspective. You just go on online and you you can set up a free account. Once you have the free account set up, you can then download Scratch Studios, and what that'll allow you to do is it'll put a program on your computer that you that will let you code in Scratch without having having to have an internet connection that the entire time. Once you finish creating your Scratch program um, in Scratch Studios, you then can upload it to their website and you can share it out with your friends. You can share it out with the world. So. Uh, when um when Thomas actually accessed this program, that's he went to the website to access something that we published earlier. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna restart it here. Craig has loved space his whole life. He's always dreamt of being an astronaut, boarding a rocket, and blasting off into the unknown. Craig, honey, it's time for bed. One night. Craig had the most amazing dream, one of those dreams that seems so real that you remember it when you wake up. As he slipped off to sleep, he pictured himself boarding a rocket ship bound for the moon. Thank you. 
time. You want to explain to them? You can take them back in the scratch. You do you want to explain to them how that was produced or show them a little bit of the coding that went behind that? Sure thing. So, um, what I'll do is let me go to let me share my screen again. Do is open up the Scratch uh, desktop. Now this is the desktop version, so you don't need you don't have to be on live for this. Let's open it up now. Okay. Yes. Sir. So while this is loading, um, just like uh, Will said, what the cool thing about Scratch is that it's a drag and drop program. Um, it basically where you can kind of connect. It's almost like a, <laughs> it's it's like a, 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 almost a digital form of Legos, if you will. It's a good way to explain it. So it has uh couple of uh, different color codings. So you have your blue here, motion, and that'll, will explain more and more in detail of that, but you wanna give you a general idea. Uh, so basically what we did, if I open up the, the story that we just did, I can show you all of the commands that basically went into developing that short story. that I could kind of show you also as you click on the individual parts or commands, show you basically what happens at each scene. Okay, so on here, scroll it here, we have our individual sprites. Those are the, basically each figure that you see here. Within those sprites, we can give commands to each one. So, for example, this is rocket ship on here. If I were to go, I can uh, open up a new we'll select. It was cool about this program is it also has different different types of sprites. So. And it, it shows you kind of different forms of animation that you can do. So we'll pick, uh, we'll pick Avery here. He does like a walking animation. Okay. So this, uh, oh, another thing in terms of movement, the flag here means go, of course, and stop is red, is the red button. So we're gonna give him, go here to events. So this will give us our starting point. Okay. okay. So when I press this green button, I can have him move. So just just to interject, this kind of this kind of shows you or demonstrates how the Scratch language focuses more on the mindset of being a computer programmer or a coder versus bogging um, people down in figuring out all of the complex code. Because here, you're thinking like a, it gets you thinking like a programmer. What do I need to do to make Avery start walking? Uh, well, I need to click on this little green flag, or maybe I want it. Maybe I want something else to start Avery to walk in. But I get to make that decision. I, it's, that's part of my logic process, part of my thinking process. 
Um, and then after I click that flag, what do I want to happen then? Well, according to the code that Mr. Thomas just put in there, he wants Avery to move from one point on the screen to another point on the, uh, we'll start at one point on the screen and then move to another point on the screen. And that was, that's what's gonna create that movement effect. All right, so this is uh, the Roblox uh, registration page. Roblox is a ga uh, gaming platform a mobile gaming platform that a lot of kids are playing nowadays on their mobile devices, their tablets, their smartphones, but it also allows you to play on PC too. Um, cool part about this game is it's not just one game. It's a bunch of different worlds. Some of them, some of the worlds are created by companies. Some of the worlds are created by individual users, just, you know, average people at home who have an interest and uh, code and game design, and they want to be able to build their own environments to play in. Um, so Roblox gives us that opportunity to teach code in, in a fun way, um, and it just requires you setting up a free account. So in order to set that account up, you just go to roblox.com. Um, you have to put in you know, some demographic information, birthday, uh, create a username for yourself, and a couple, uh, answer a couple of simple questions, and then you sign up. Once you sign up for Roblox, what that does is it gives you access to the game itself. Um, that account can be used to log in on your computer to play Roblox, or you can also use that same account to download the Roblox app onto your mobile device and then play the Roblox game there. We're taking it a step further by using a separate piece of software called Roblox Studio. Roblox Studio is the programming environment that you use to actually create these Roblox worlds. Once you use the Roblox Studio software and create your environment, you can then upload it to Roblox website uh, where you and your friends, or you can even make it open to the general public, can, they can all play your game. This is, is an example of Roblox Studio. Um, so once you have that installed on your PC or Mac, those are the only two platforms that it's able to be installed on. Uh, you, can't, you can't put it on a tablet, unfortunately. You can play the game, the Roblox game on a tablet or smartphone, but when it comes to actually building your world, you have to be on a PC or a Mac. Um, so that, that's one limitation, but um, <clears throat> hopefully we can get everybody access to a, you know, a PC or a Mac in order to be able to take part in this portion of the uh, program. Um, once you're in that world though, we're gonna be taking students through the process of being able to navigate this programming tool uh, that they that we call Roblox Studio. We created a sample world there called the Church Shell Lee. You can see the name of our, our environment there and there. Um, <clears throat> and we built a church or we uh, we didn't build this one from scratch. We modified one. Um, there's a lot of prefabricated uh, items like cars and characters that you can add to your world and then you can put code behind them similar to what we did what we did in scratch to make them do certain things so in this uh environment we just created a big grassy knoll big grassy area for the church to sit in um and then we can move it around so if i use the move tool i can reposition you know where it's where the building is maybe pull it up or push it down I can change the scale of it. I can make it bigger or smaller. I can rotate it. I can do all types of things. Um, and I can add more things to this environment so it doesn't look so plain. We're gonna learn all about how to do all of those actions. And then once I have everything set up, if I want to actually test it, I can go and I can, imp I can allow my character, my Roblox character, excuse me, to my test world. I can explore to see how it will feel once I'm actually playing this game. So right now I'm launching that test environment. So this is the inside of the church building that uh, that we just created. Like I said, cool little game similar to uh, Minecraft if you're familiar with that. Everything everything in this environment in this church was built with basic shapes. So again, this this build probably took somebody a while, but they have um, the ability to, once you build something this complex, you can share it with the rest of the Roblox community and let them use it free. That way uh, other people don't have to build it from scratch. So this was built by a community user. 
but we went in and changed things like we made the lighting different. Uh, we put, repositioned the building a bit. We changed the way that the light passed through the windows and all that stuff is done with code. Another cool feature of Roblox is you don't have to work alone when you're in the Roblox environment. Uh, there's a tool that we're going to be teaching the students about called Roblox um, Team Create. With a Roblox Team Create, um, you're able to collaborate with other people. Um, you can see right there it says TSAN0284. That's, that's, Mr. that's, that's <laughs> Mr. Thomas's uh, character. And, and over here on the side where it says Team Create Beta, I'm Cupid299, he's TSAN 0284. We're collaboratively working on this Roblox world. So if we want to test this Roblox world together, I can then go to um, home and I can go to this team test feature. What this will do is it'll drop both of us into the, into the, uh, into the world. Still, I'm still materializing, <laughs> or spawning rather. And then when Ed Pettigrew has left the meeting, I'll just spawn in a second. Is the character coming in yet? Um, in one moment. That little pad that I came in on is called a spawn spawn location that's where your character materializes into the game we'll be teaching little game development tips like that you can have multiple spawn points like this so if i if i'm creating if i'm turning my story into a game say maybe i maybe i wrote an adventure story and that kind of lends itself towards an adventure game i might want that uh adventure to be a little bit more drawn out. So I'll create multiple spawn points. That way somebody can use them as a checkpoint. They, they make it this far in the adventure and then they make it to that second spawn point. Um, and then if something happens, their character falls off a cliff, they don't have to start the game all over <laughs> from scratch. They can start where they left. They can pick up where they left off. And you can see that uh, their time to spawn into the game. He can move around freely, same way I am. I, and even while we're in this test mode, we can still build things. I'm grabbing a tree. <laughs> I'll put a tree inside the church. Let me zoom out. There we go. <laughs> I'll just drop the tree on us. There we go. Um, but in addition to, again, the game design aspect of this, this also reinforces coding because once we have objects inside of our game environment, I'm going to come out, I'm going to exit out of the, out of the team play right now. Once we have objects inside of the environment, those objects can have code applied to them um, in the form of what they call scripts. Find an example script to show you. Roblox uses a programming language called Lua. Like all programming languages, it has some of the it has the same type of logic behind it. It just uses different different words, more coding. So this is what a Lua script, a really basic Lua script, looks like. So we'll be teaching the students how to code using this language Lua in order to make special effects and other things happen inside of their Roblox game. Like, for example, one, one uh, effect that a lot of, of games that I've seen on Roblox platform ha have are the ability to make their characters fly. So that happens through applying a script to your character. You can give them the power of flight. So this will be really cool when, when once they start coming up with their stories, coming up with their um, uh, their stories, they can then adapt those stories to a game environment, uh, because that's essentially all video games are nowadays. They're they're stories that you get to actually play.
did you have anything else to add to that, Tom? Or did I cover cover it pretty good? Uh, yeah, I think you covered it. <laughs> All, right. All right, so let me unmute Rio Beacons. Um, Ms. Beacons, did you have anything to uh, add about the storytelling portion? I'm excited because what I wanted to say earlier was that with the storytelling, uh, first the child will start out with coming up with an idea. And from the idea, going from there to writing the story. What I'm liking about this digital storytelling is that with the story, they can now add visuals, either still or moving. They can add music. They can add sound. And this is what's exciting. So first, we're starting with the story. And they have the storyboard, and they can draw out uh, the things that they would want to incorporate to make their story come alive. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm excited. I'm sitting here going, "Whoa, this, <laughs> this is what I was thinking about uh, with digital storytelling." The first, we start off with the story, and from that, they add they add to make their story even more exciting. And, and we're dealing with critical thinking, uh, problem solving, and uh, I'm excited. It's new for me, because I'm used to just telling the story. But now we're gonna take the story a little a little further in that um, we're gonna add all of these other elements to make it uh, exciting. I'm excited. Awesome. All right, so let's um, open up the floor for questions. Um, be questions about how to get accounts set up, questions about, um, you know, more about Roblox or more about the storytelling process or Scratch. Um, I want to give everybody, well, the folks who were able to get back connected again, a chance to uh, speak on that. And maybe you'll bring up a question that will answer somebody's question in it, uh, who, who, who uh, wasn't able to reattach to the call. And once we upload this video to uh, YouTube, they'll be able to get their answer uh, their question answered just by watching the video. Right. I have a question. Yes. Um, you said that, are you, or are you asking for the students to download, you said Scratch, is a Scratch Studio? Um, so they can either use Scratch directly from the website or they can download a tool called Scratch Desktop. So Scratch Desktop is the, the, the program that lets you code in Scratch without having an internet connection. If, but you do have the option of coding in Scratch straight from their website. You just have to set up a, and either way, you have to set up an account, a free account for Scratch. But if, you just, if you're just using just the Scratch free web account, you have to be connected to the internet every time you um, start coding. Okay, and also for the, um, um, so my daughter, she, already, she has a Roblox account, like she plays it already. You need to create a different <laughs> one just to be a part of this of this. Nope. She can use her same Roblox account. So what happens is you with the to actually design your own world, you have to download Roblox Studio. So that's that okay. one's a little bit different than Scratch. With Scratch, it's an either or type thing. With Roblox, with Roblox, in order to make your world, you have to have the Roblox Studio program. You'll go to their same you'll go to their same website. Um, Roblox.com, and actually, actually, let me share my screen out so I can show you how to get to the studio. <clears throat> I also want to add to that, um, it's the same account. So the, the same account that you use for, uh, to play Roblox, uh -huh. when you go into Roblox Studio, it's the same account. Okay. So same account, just different program. Different programs, right. I'm just going to share my screen out again so I can show you how to get to that Roblox, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the Roblox Studio program. So easiest way is if you go to Google and it's just Google Roblox Studio. It'll take you to a page in their website. Still part of the Ro the Roblox website, but it's under is a sub page under the Roblox.com 
called Create. So roblox.com slash create, or just Google Roblox Studio, and it'll bring you here to this page. I'm letting you know that you can make your own world uh, with the free immersive creation tool. You hit that start creating, and this will this will trigger a download. I already have it on my computer, of course. Um, so it's telling me, you know, just open up what you have. But if you don't have it on your system already, it'll start the download. You can click that download studios button and it'll start the download process. And then you just run the install. It's pretty straightforward, like a next, next, next type thing. Um, and it, it'll get that program installed on your computer. You then, you then launch it whenever you want to work in Roblox Studio. You don't have to be connected to the internet. You launch it. It'll open up the, the environment that I just uh, demoed for you. And then you can start creating your Roblox world. Um, one thing I like about it is you can start designing. You can get designing your own Roblox world in, within a couple of minutes. It's, it's very easy to pick up. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to have the code in order to start designing your world. You can drag and drop things and, and put in items that other people have created, start building your world that way. And then as you get uh, more comfortable with it and better and better with it, then you can start incorporating the code and to make, to make the objects that you've added to, the, to your world do cool and crazy things. <laughs> Um, and we're going to be taking taking them through that. We're going to be spending the majority of the program um, focused on that. So the the program is ten weeks. Uh, if if that wasn't mentioned before, um, <clears throat> so we're going to be spending six of those weeks on Roblox and four of those in the first four weeks on Scratch and the final six weeks on Roblox. So they're going to have a decent amount of time to be able to kind of dive into Roblox and get really good at developing your own worlds. And as you make your worlds, you get to, you can publish them online and you can share them with your friends so that she said, you said your daughter already plays. Now she'll be, able to, she'll be able to invite her friends to the world that she built and they can run around and play in it. Okay. I have one more question. I'm sorry. No um, are we, is this, I know this is for the summer. This, this um, class is for the summer. Or is it for the summer? Like, are they supposed to be? Are we supposed to be meeting weekly on here? Like, yeah. So we're it'll be kicking off next week on the twenty third, mm -hmm. and it's going to be running through June twenty fifth through the beginning of the um excuse me the beginning of the summer. Uh, we're meeting weekly on Thursdays. I think we're we were originally going to meet on three at three thirty, but I think we pushed that back to four thirty from for for ninety minutes from four thirty to was that six o'clock? Okay. Excuse me once a week and that'll be to cover both the story the storytelling portion and um the 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 coding aspect okay so do you need the parents on here or just the student just the student if the parent wants to be on and participate that's fine too but if your student is able to get online and um uh connect to the webex and everything then the student can just uh connect okay and so we'll get an invite. I don't mean to be doing all the talking, but we'll get an invite for next Thursday. Yeah. So um, I'm going once following this, we're going to be setting up the the WebEx invite for the for a reoccurring meeting every Thursday. Um. So what will happen is once that reoccurring meeting gets set up every every week, you'll get a reminder 30 minutes before the class starts. Okay. So for the storytelling section, what's your um, format that you're going to be using for that? I'll let Ms. Meekins answer that question. Let me mute out. I'll mute you. Yeah, okay, for, the, for the storytelling, I'm working on the kids developing characters. I'm working with the kids developing plots, looking to see what makes a, what makes a story. And those elements and taking them from uh, what they already know and then expanding on it. And I'm loving this because they'll be able to write their story. And then from their story, they can make an adventure um, game. So that's going to be exciting. Yeah, I think so too. 
So yes, I'm going to work on seeing what they know about what they've learned in school already about what makes what makes a good story. What do you what do you do to write a story, and taking it from there. That's for 90 minutes as well. Well, what we were looking at um, in that Mr. Dr. Saunders and I would split the 90 minutes. So say I would have 45 minutes to work on uh, writing skills, and then say he would have 45 minutes to work on building the game. That would make up your 90 minutes. Okay. If we see that, but if we see that uh, the kids are really, really into it, we might have to. We may have to. I don't know, but extend it to maybe we each would have to take ninety minutes. That being the case, we would have to, as opposed to one day a week, we have to do maybe two days a week. In that, I would have my ninety minutes to teach the writing. And he would have 90 minutes with the storytelling. I mean, with the um, um, adventure. Yeah, because students, some of the students are at different levels, so you know that may be, that may work a little better. Also, not <clears throat> excuse me. Also, the benefit of um, the technology side of it, since these are free tools that people can just download onto their computer even after we finish the instruction. So my goal is really to help them learn how to use these programs and then set them loose, right? So if a kid is like really into it, they got, they got their story, they got starting to develop their characters. Um, once I show them how to use certain tools in Scratch and Roblox, they can be working on it throughout the week. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's good. Because they both of these platforms are like they're they're pretty addictive. They're pretty fun. Um, once you get once you get code, even for adults, once you start code and you see, you know, that oh may, maybe you didn't feel like coding was your thing, but then you you figure something out and you you get that character to dance around on the screen. It, it's kind of a rush, <laughs> and um, and the kids will be, they'll they'll get into it. Next thing you know, they'll be they'll be making Roblox characters and code in their own little scratch videos and games without you prompting them. Yeah, that's good. Any, we got any other questions? We don't have any more questions. Um, I know, again, we had uh, a lot of folks get dropped off for the call. Um, so I'll touch base with the, excuse me, the minister's conference to see if they want to have a, a second orientation. Um, but we will be editing this video and post, because I'm recording the, recording the uh, meeting now. We'll be editing this and uploading it to YouTube too. So that that will also serve to provide some information. I'm heading to next week's uh, kickoff of the actual program. Um, again, the you, you should be looking out for an email invite from from Cisco WebEx, similar to what you saw today. Uh, the meeting time for the classes are is going to be four o'clock. Sorry, uh, four thirty to six o'clock on Thursdays. Being sick. Everybody else, have a good evening. And we'll see you on the 23rd. Hey, you too. Thanks. Okay. Excuse me. Yes. Yeah, question? Yes. Um, what does this have to do with the job? With a job? Yeah, they had told me this was like for a job, not some um not to like for games or none of that. <laughs> So it's it's job training if you if you think of it like that because it's teaching computer programming. So the whole like all the lessons are going to be about gaming. No, so half of half of the um class or 
about half of the class is uh, teaching a computer programming language called Scratch, and the other half of the class is teaching another uh, computer coding uh, platform called Roblox. That part has game design in it, but it also has programming too. So the, the goal is you're learning computer programming, which is one of the most in-demand tech skills uh, out there nowadays. Yeah. And let's not forget as well with uh, developing story, um, creative writing is also a very important uh, career skill. Let's not, <laughs> let's not forget uh, Ms. Meekin's role in this class as well, which okay. is very important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, that, was a, that was a great question uh, I, I want to add because, um, you know, there's, you know, a lot of people do want to know, you know, how does this apply to, <laughs> to, you know, uh, practically, you know, in, in the career field or just in general? So that was a very uh, great question to uh, to ask. Thank you for asking. Are you looking into technology as a as a career path? Um, not really, because I want to be a detective. Okay, you can be you can be, do technology and be a detective. Too. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're gonna need them skills. <laughs> Technology skills. A lot of your evidence. Technology skills. A lot of your evidence nowadays is tech is technology. You know, being able to yeah. being able to hack into somebody's cell phone so that you could trace their calls and all that stuff. That's yeah. <laughs> all right. Um. If we don't have any more questions, I'll go ahead and end the meeting. Um, feel free to email me uh, if you have if you do have any additional questions that come up later. I'm going to put my email address in the chat re really quick so y'all can see it.